Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. True red tail boas are among the most highly esteemed reptiles kept in captivity with a dedicated cult-like following. However, they're not the most straightforward of captives and there's a lot that can go wrong if you're not properly prepared. Today I want to run through a checklist of important things that you should know before you pick up your first true red tail boa, including how to select the boa, the, the proper husbandry for the boa, and how to avoid some of the more common mistakes. So stay tuned and we'll have you on your way to keeping true red tails like a seasoned pro. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So be sure to subscribe if you want to check out my upcoming boa videos. So first of all, what is a true red tail boa? Well, this is a boa constrictor of the subspecies boa constrictor constrictor. So these animals live largely over northern South America. There's some living in Caribbean islands such as Trinidad and Tobago. But there's actually quite a few other types of boas on the market that are referred to erroneously as red tail boas, most commonly the Colombian boa, boa imperator. And these animals are commonly marketed by the pet industry as red tail boas because it's a more attractive sales term. But really the only true red tails are the animals of boa constrictor constrictor, such as I'll show you in this video. And so if you're new to boas, I highly recommend that you do not get a true red tail as your first boa. It's really a more challenging form of a boa. They don't make the best pets. Um, they're not the most handleable animals. People that are into these animals are mostly because of their beauty. Um, they're extremely impressive looking animals. Uh, they, you know, they, they're the most muscular types of boas and they have some of the most beautiful colors and markings. But as far as a strict pet boa that you want to take out and handle on a regular basis, the true red tail is not the boa for you. I've covered the best types of pet boas in some of my other videos, so check those out. Before you acquire your first true red tail, you should also carefully consider your motivation in wanting one. Unfortunately, there's a lot of snobbery in the boa hobby and some keepers look down upon any boa that's not a true red tail as somehow being inferior. And frankly, this is a lot of utter nonsense. So this particular animal is a Branchia columbia boa. This is a boa imperator. She's not a true red tail, even though she has quite a bit of red in her tail. And this animal is every bit as beautiful as most of my true red tail boas. I just really love this, these Barranquilla boas. Um, she's also a lot more straightforward as far as her husbandry than the true red tails and more enjoyable to handle as well. So definitely a better pet than a true red tail. So think about why you want the true red tail. Do you want it just because there's this pressure for you to take care of a more challenging species of boa? Or do you want the boa because it's beautiful and you want to accept that challenge and add the animal to your collection. Don't just get a true red tail because people are pressuring you or you feel like you should do it to prove yourself as a boa keeper. So now if you're ready for a true red tail, the next part of the video I want to show you some of the different types of true red tail boas that are available. First I want to show you a Suriname red tail boa. This is one of the most common types available and these animals really are the epitome of the true red tail. So you can see this animal has this nice pinkish buckskin brown color. She's got moderately peaked saddles. You can see the saddles, some of them have this little extension that points towards the tail and towards the head. That's the peaking. Uh, Surinams can have either moderately peaked, strongly peaked, or non-peaked saddles. And then most importantly, the Surinams have this really long, bright red tail. And so these animals can be one of the largest types of boas and can get up to around 12 feet, although that's extremely rare, with a large animal being around 8 to 9 feet. This particular female is actually uh, almost 7 years old and she's only about 5 feet, so some of them do stay on the smaller side. And Surinams, like most true red tails, also have these distinctive head markings, including eyelash markings above the eyes. The next type of true red tail boa that you might see on the market is the Guiana red tail boa. And these are from Guiana, a country in northern South America, just west of Suriname. And so superficially, they're very similar to the Suriname true red tail boas. In fact, if you don't have detailed uh, locality information, you can't 
tell the difference between a Guiana and a Suriname bloodtail just by based on physical characteristics. And I've actually done a video in the past on the differences, if any, between Guiana and Suriname redtail, so make sure to check that out if you're interested. So in general, the Guiana form of true redtail is said to be a little bit darker, a little more grayish purple. Um, they also, in general, have more dark markings and more speckles and background markings. Um, this particular animal is an adult male from Mike Eckert's bloodline. And one of the reasons I picked up this animal was because he doesn't look anything like any of my Suriname boas. He's just more of a purplish overall in color, a lot more dark background markings. You can see his tail is kind of more of a dark maroonish color. Just a really cool look. And again, he doesn't look anything like my Suriname boas. Although if I didn't have the locality information for, with this boa, I couldn't really t say for sure that he was a Guiana red tail boa. And so the Suriname and the Guiana are probably the two most common forms of red tail that are on the market. And they're really the only two localities that are available with any regularity. A third locality of true red tail that's a little harder to find than the Suriname or Guiana is the North Brazilian locality like this one. And these animals superficially are similar to Guiana or Suriname, but the background color tends to be more of a yellowish gray in color. Um, they also have more busy markings, so they have a lot of background speckles and freckles and splotches, and the saddles are a little more indistinct. They are often somewhat aberrant in shape. You can see this animal has some peaking, but the saddles are somewhat asymmetrical. They will often have some striping as well. The tail is generally not quite as long or as red as the Guiana or Suriname, but they have the beautiful dirty look, the background markings is what I really like about these North Brazilians. So they also get to be a little bit smaller than the Guiana or Suriname with a typical adult in the five to seven foot range. Uh, so this particular animal is a five year old female that was uh, bred by Vin Russo and she should be ready to breed probably I would say another year or two. Next we have the true red tails from Peru like this one and they're considered by many as the ultimate of the true red tail boas. Looking at their muscular bodies and their beautiful golden colors it's not hard to see why. So this particular animal is a 2015 holdback. I actually have him in breeding trials right now so hoping for a litter from him but you can see the beautiful golden uh, yellow coloration you know, the thin, slightly peaked saddles and the long red tail. The tails in general aren't quite as long or bright as the Suriname and Guiana boas, but the beautiful golden body more than makes up for this. They're also among the largest of the true red tails, said to reach up to 13 feet long, although a typical adult is more often in the six to nine foot range. There are said to be two different forms of red tail boa from Peru, that originating from Iquitos and the form from Pacalpa, both cities in the Amazon rainforest. However, the differences between these two forms are subtle and ambiguous, and it's unclear whether they represent actual distinct uh, groups. And I did a video previously comparing the supposed differences between the two. It's not unlike the Guiana versus Suriname situation, where if you don't have detailed locality information, it's impossible to differentiate based on physical characteristics. So Peruvian boas in general are harder to find and more expensive than the Guiana and Suriname boas, but well worth looking out for if you're interested in owning the ultimate true red tail boa. One final locality of true red tail that's a little harder to find than the other types I've shown you, but well worth picking up, is the Venezuelan true red tail like this one. And these animals are a little bit on the smaller side with adults, typically in the five to six foot range. Uh, you can see they have these really nice symmetrical bow tie shaped saddles. The background color tends to be kind of a golden yellowish brown in color. And then they have this nice rusty red tail. Uh, one other characteristic that these animals often will exhibit is that they have this little dot of background color, the lighter background color, 
in the center of each of these bow tie shaped saddles. But they're a really cool animal. They're not seen very often. This female is from the main bloodline of Venezuelan red tails that's available, which is the Rio Bravo bloodline. She was bred by my friend Mike Lucchese in 2017, so she's a sub-adult, you know, got a few more years to go till she reaches breeding size. And the last thing I wanted to say about the Venezuelan red tails is they tend to be a little more calm and less squeezy than some of the other true red tails. So I really enjoy taking them out to handle. So that was a survey of some of the different types of true red tails available. There's also a few other types that are rarely available, including the forms from Ecuador, the islands of Trinidad and Tobago, and even from Colombia. So keep your eyes out for those. The next topic I want to cover is how you can obtain your first true red tail boa. And so I would recommend that you search for a respectable breeder, ask around people, ask for recommendations of other people that own boas, where they got their true red tails from. Because the reputation of the breeder is of utmost importance. You want a breeder who's going to spend the time to get the baby boas established and feeding and make sure they're off to the best start. You also want a breeder who's going to be open to questions and open to assisting you with the husbandry because baby red tails can be somewhat delicate, especially for their first year. You also want a breeder who's going to be open as far as the background information that he has on his or her breeders, the bloodline and where he obtained the animals and you know how many other litters they produce, things like that. So make sure you ask these questions before you buy your true red tail just so that you can hopefully build up a relationship with the breeder because if you're having any issues, going to the breeder to get help is of utmost importance. So what I would not recommend absolutely is to get a wild caught boa, especially if you're new to true red tails. The wild caught red tails are very difficult to establish and they often have parasites and other diseases. So if you might see that the true red tails are less expensive, you know, in some cases you can pick up a wild caught true red tail for around half the price as a captive born baby. But trust me, you'll need to put a lot of money into vet bills to get that boa uh, up and running. And there's still a good chance that the boa won't make it. So absolutely avoid wild caught for your first true red tail. Also, you probably want to avoid what I call a second hand boa. This is a boa from somebody that bought the boa from a breeder. They've had it for a few months and the novelty wore off and now they want to sell it. So there's a pretty good chance that animals like this haven't had the optimal husbandry and might have some kind of health issues. They could even be carrying mites or some other parasite or disease. So avoid buying a secondhand boa unless you really trust the person and you know the background of the animal. Next, I want to give you a brief overview of the husbandry of the true red tail boa. And true red tail boas are more delicate and sensitive, and in general, they're harder to keep than the non true red tail boas. You really have to make sure that your husbandry conditions are right on target. Other types of boas are more uh, tolerant of fluctuations in humidity and temperature, but with the true red tails, you really need to nail it right down or they're going to have issues. So as far as the humidity range, I keep my boas enclosures with a hot spot of 88 to 90 degrees and the cool side is set at 75 to 80 degrees. So true red tail boas, they don't like it too hot and frequently I see my boas resting on the cool side. They like to chill out in, you know, in the upper 70s or so. In addition, the humidity is really important. True red tail boas in general need higher humidity than other types of boas. So I would keep the humidity in the 70 to 80% range. I've seen before with some types of true red tails, such as my North Brazilian boas, if they don't have high enough humidity, they have issues with shedding. So for animals with uh, shedding issues, Increase the humidity, use uh, spray bottles to mist down the enclosure, use a room humidifier, and also use a, a substrate that encourages high humidity, like coconut core bedding. True red tails are more sensitive to external environmental cues. So when you set up your enclosure, you wanna make sure to provide the animal with a lot of hiding places. You want hiding places both on the hut side as well as the cool end of the enclosure so the boa can select where it feels the most comfortable in order to hide. 
You also want to limit the environmental uh, distractions in the background. So you don't want any loud noises or uh, strong smells, things like that. So boas actually can hear, you know, it's a myth that snakes can hear, but they can hear very low frequency sounds. So if you have loud music playing in the next room and the walls are vibrating, your boa is not going to like it, especially a true red tail boa. In addition, you don't want to wear strong perfumes or strong smelling, you know, things around them because they're sensitive to those smells. You really have to keep the environment very constant and you want to avoid any kind of stress to the animals. In addition, they don't like handling as much. In fact, most of my true red tails I don't handle very much at all. Other types of boas like common Colombian boas or morph boas in general are more handleable and they're not as susceptible to handling induced stress. So if you want a boa, as I mentioned, that you're going to take out and handle a lot, a true red tail is not the best boa for you. So as far as the true red tail boa husbandry, you want to make sure that you can precisely control the environment and keep the stress very low to keep your boa happy and healthy. The next topic I'm going to discuss is where a lot of people go wrong with true red tails, and that's with feeding. So true red tails in general have more delicate digestive systems and they can't be fed nearly as often as a lot of other boas. And this starts as babies. So one notorious issue with true red tail babies is regurgitation. So the animals will vomit up their food typically around three or four days after eating it if the conditions aren't kept to their liking. The most common scenario is that a keeper has the hut side a little too hot, you know, in the 92 or 94 degree range, and the boa ends up regurgitating because of this. You'll feed your animal, and then three or four days later, you'll notice this wet, kind of slimy looking, partially digested rodent on one side of the cage that smells really awful, and that's a regurgitation. So most commonly this is caused by the hot side being too hot, but it can also be caused by handling the animal after it's eaten or too much stress or feeding them too often. And the issue with regurgitation is that once it sets in, the animals often will go down this vicious cycle where they just continue to regurgitate and can't keep any food down, ultimately dying a few months later. So if you do have a regurgitation, what you should do is carefully check the husbandry in your enclosure. You want the hot side to be no hotter than 88 to 90 degrees. And then you want the cool side to be 75 to 80 degrees. You want the humidity to be 70 to 80 percent. And you also don't want to feed them too often. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. With baby true red tails, I would recommend feeding at most every two weeks. I've discussed regurgitation in depth in a previous video, so check that one out. But if you do have a regurgitation, the first thing you should do is don't feed again for another four weeks. You really want to get, let the animal uh, heal up, give the animal's digestive tract a chance to just settle down. And then after four weeks, you want to feed a slightly smaller than normal size meal. Feed a prey item that's one size smaller than you have been feeding. So if the animal was feeding on small mice, you want to feed it a hopper sized mouse. You also want to make absolutely sure that your husband is right on spot. You don't want that hot side to be any hotter than 88 or 89 degrees. Get a infrared thermometer gun so that you can check the precise temperature of the hot spot. Don't trust your thermostat setting. And then after you feed, you want to be extra careful not to disturb your animal. Give it lots of space. Don't handle the animal for at least several days uh, after it's been fed. And keep any kind of noise or distraction to an absolute minimum. And then hopefully your animal will keep the meal down. So what unfortunately happens a lot with regurgitation is that the keeper panics and they feed the boa again too soon. And the digestive tract of the boa hasn't had time to recover and so of course the boa ends up regurgitating again and then it gets harder and harder the more the boa regurgitates to get out of that vicious cycle and unfortunately a lot of these boas don't make it and end up dying after a few months of this cycle. Regardless of their age it's important that you don't overfeed a true red tail and so for babies up to about two years of age I would recommend feeding once every two weeks 
For sub-adults age two through five years of age, I would recommend feeding about once every three weeks. And for adults, I would recommend feeding about once every four weeks. And you wanna feed a prey item that leaves a barely perceptible bulge. You don't wanna feed the largest prey item that the animal could hypothetically eat. And so for my two red tails, I feed mostly mice and rats with, you know, the, the mice basically are tapered off after the animals get to about two years of age. And I also feed quail and chicks occasionally to give some uh, variety in their diet. You don't want your true red tails to grow too fast. So it's usual that they will take at least four to five years to get to sexual maturity when they're properly slow grown. And most red tails do not get to these giant sizes. A typical adult of most uh, localities of true red tail is anywhere from six to eight feet in length. The last topic I wanna to cover about true red tails is breeding. And in general, breeding true red tail boas is more difficult than breeding non true red tail boas. So as I mentioned, they take longer to reach sexual maturity and you really wanna wait for males until they're at least four years old, for females until they're at least five years old before attempting to breed them. The animals need to have a certain amount of muscle mass before they're successful as breeders, especially the females. And so this particular animal is a five-year-old female. She's still probably about two years away from being ready to breed. Um, typically the animals will start to look more muscular when they're about three to four years old. They get more square and kind of more muscular and beefy looking. Um, but the adults that are ready to breed are really square and very muscular looking. So you want to be patient when you're growing up your red tail breeders. Resist the urge to power feed them and get them growing too fast because a fatty overweight boa is a really poor breeder. So when you're conditioning true red tails for breeding, there, it's a lot less straightforward than with other types of reptiles. Some reptiles are basically formula breeders. So you just follow a set of environmental instructions. You cool the temperature to a certain temperature for a certain time, and then you put your animals together and they breed and you have babies. However, with true red tails, you can't really approach it that way. You know, what works for some breeders doesn't work for other breeders. You know, some breeders will breed after a slight cooling period. Others will not cool down the animals and had success. And so what works with one pair of boas doesn't necessarily work with another pair. You might find that one pair, for whatever reason, will breed successfully under whatever conditions, whereas another pair won't breed successfully under any conditions. So there might be just individual compatibility. Maybe the boas just don't like each other. Maybe the female red tails are a little more picky. I don't know. But in general, it's harder to breed these animals than non-true red tails. You may also need to pair up a pair one year and you don't have success and then try again the following year. You know, sometimes it takes two years to get a parrot to breed. Litter sizes for true red tails are generally a little smaller than for some of the common or morph boas, with a typical litter being anywhere from 15 to 20 babies. Often first time litters are considerably smaller, often as few as three or four babies, and litter sizes of 30 or 40 babies have been reported. So, True red tail boas are a challenge to breed, and this is one of the reasons I'm so drawn to them. Even after working with them for many years, I'm still learning new things every year. And if you try to breed true red tails, you'll find that a lot of what's in the books isn't correct. And you know, a lot of the information that helps you breed them successfully, you have to figure out for yourself. So it's important to just keep at it year after year, taking careful notes and applying what you learn each year to the next year. And this is what makes these spectacular animals such a challenge and so rewarding to keep. I really look forward to every year of breeding and the secrets I'll learn as a result of this additional experience. So to recap, true red tail boas can be extremely rewarding captives for the right keeper. But before getting yours, you wanna make sure that you have your husbandry in order and everything set up to assure success. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to reach out to me via social media with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.